Here, I'm a product manager on the Azure Logic Apps team, joined by... I'm Divya Swanka, product manager on Logic Apps team. And today we're going to talk about building AI agents in Azure Logic Apps. So just by a show of hands, who is familiar with Azure Logic Apps? Either seen it or used it? Okay, it's quite a few. This is great to see. So for those of you that might be new to Logic Apps, uh, this is an enterprise orchestration platform used for automating and integrating your business applications. So we offer workflows today, and we have over 1,400 different connectors that you can use in order to address your business integration and automation needs. Now, we are an enterprise-ready platform, which means you can go ahead and run in a variety of different hosting models, including single tenancy that allows you to have dedicated compute, storage, and networking. We truly are enterprise ready. Now, we also offer some additional integration capabilities that you would expect, so data transformation, business process tracking, and we offer a couple different experiences for building these solutions. That can be the Azure portal or VS Code. Now, earlier this week, we announced something we're really excited about, and that is a, uh, a capability called Agent Loop. And this allows you to build agents inside of Azure Logic Apps. Now, these agents can be either autonomous or conversational. So you heard that right. You can now chat with your Logic Apps. Now, we do offer a declarative low-code experience, but we've also announced this week the ability to build these workflows and agents in a codeful manner as well. So that is something that we've just announced as private preview, and we do have a blog post on that. Uh, one other important thing to note here is while we're building AI agents, we also have some integration with AI Foundry, and we are continuing to invest in that as well. So you will see these agents being enumerated in AI Foundry, and you will also see the threads and messaging show up over there, really giving you that ability to plug into the broader ecosystem. So let's talk a little bit about a scenario. And this scenario is around a... Uh, a company that has a recruiting function, like we all do. And in this case, we've built an internal agent that will help our recruiting team manage their job postings, manage their candidates, seek recommendations on candidates, and then also help with some of that busy work, the busy work that's difficult to go ahead and get done. And that includes scheduling meetings, uh, candidate outreaches, and those are areas that we're going to go ahead and automate. Now, our agent is going to take advantage of these tools that we've pre-configured in Logic Apps that is going to help us out and go ahead and fulfill those opportunities. So I'm going to pass it over to Divya, and she's going to give a short walkthrough of Agent Loop, and then we're going to see this demo live in action. All right, so let's go ahead and create this agent. And the first step is to create an agent workflow. Uh, you will see an additional option when you create the workflows to create agent workflows now. So here I'm going to go ahead and create my workflow. And when I open it, uh, it will have a placeholder for trigger, like any usual workflow. But now you will see an, a new action here, which is the agent loop action. And uh, let's go ahead and configure this action. So the first thing that you need to do is to associate your agent with an a AI model. In this case, we support Azure Open AI service. So I can go ahead and create a new connection or use an existing one that I already have here. After that, you go ahead and choose the model of your choice. And then the next thing is to provide your agent with system instructions. This essentially defines the goal and the purpose of your agent. So here we can give the system instructions as well as user instructions to the agent. <clears throat> this by itself is an agent who can do certain things, but now you want to ground this agent in your business data and allow it to, and empower it to take actions. And this happens through tools. So you can go ahead and add tools. And in Logic Apps, we offer 1400 plus connectors that you can use to create these tools that empower your agent. So let's go ahead and uh, look at an agent that we already created beforehand. And just to demonstrate the capabilities here, if I go into the agent loop here, it has um, a section setting called channels. So today for this demo, we are focusing on a conversational agent. 
and to make uh, to have an agent converse uh, do conversations with you you need to enable channels so here we have both input and output uh, channels enabled so that we can do back and forth with the agent the other uh, then you can see a list of tools that this agent has uh, that allow it to uh, get job uh, get information about the jobs about the job postings about the candidates as well as manage the calendar of the recruiter so just to go ahead and look into one of the tools here uh, every tool uh, has a description and a name which is very important for an agent to decide uh, the intent the purpose of the tool and use it in the right way so uh, let's go ahead and look at one of these tools here and here i have a tool to notify the interview team the other important uh, characteristics of uh, of uh, agent loop is agent parameters so you can always have fields in your actions map to static values or values coming in from previous steps but agent parameters give you power to delegate that to the agent so that the values of the fields can be provided at run time by your agent so now let's go ahead and uh, run this agent and here we have a client uh, chat application that's going to chat with this agent now so i'm going to go ahead and uh, ask the first question which is around the job openings available for a for for the recruiter now what's important to note here is that you've actually logged in so you can see that divya's got her name at the top right hand corner so she is actually logged in which is going to be quite important when we get a little bit further into the demo here all right so the agent invoked one of the tools and returned the job postings that the recruiter has uh, created now for a given job posting i want to check who are the candidates who are interested and have applied for it so again we send the agent received this request and now it's going to use another set of tools to look at uh, our data our uh, crm system and pull the information of the candidates who have applied for this job so here if we have the list of all the candidates who are interested and so i'm going to go ahead and um, schedule an interview with one of these candidates but before that i want to see what are the open slots in my calendar so next we ask the agent to show the open slots on my calendar for a specific date and so how this is actually enabled is because Divya's logged in. We've also introduced a new capability called on behalf of connections. And so this is something brand new. So when this actually is running, it's running underneath her context. So in this case, it's actually going to go check out her calendar because she's logged in and she's previously authorized and provided consent. And we're going to see that prompt a little bit later when we talk to teams. All right. So here I can see it, the agent pulled all the open slots from my calendar. and <laughs> i can see the list of all the open slots and let's go ahead and uh, set up the interview with one of the candidates and um, let's give the time to as 9 am here so now the agent is going to schedule a meeting send that meeting invite to both uh, to the uh, to the participant to the applicant and along with that it's also going to send a notification uh to the interview team or the interview panel who's going to take this interview another thing that's interesting here is that we talked about agent parameters and that's super important here so divya has gone ahead and said okay let's go ahead and set up a meeting for 9 a.m. so the actual model is going to understand that request and be able to map it to an agent parameter so that in that tool that can actually go ahead and funnel into that specific action Now this is one of those areas where historically everything was very deterministic step by step but in this case this is actually being orchestrated by the agent and on demand is able to go ahead and fill that slot with the appropriate value All right let's give it a couple of more seconds So here we have a tool that is actually doing multiple things that which is why it's taking little longer where it's scheduling the interview as well as going to notify the team and as part of that process uh, as ken was explaining earlier we are using the identity of the signed in user here 
So you will just see that we'll, I'll be asked to log in and use my identity uh, to send that notification to the team. And so you um, can imagine this being quite useful for any of those services, especially in, in Microsoft 365, where you're going to go ahead and transact on behalf of the user. Because this is really part of the opportunities. We want to take away some of that busy work and actually be able to perform it. But performing that work is super important that we do it in the context of the user itself. And so this is going to be a, a very powerful uh, feature capability um, going forward for agents uh, inside of Logic Apps. So here we have a message from the agent that the interview has been scheduled, but in order to notify the team, it wants me to authorize that connection. So I'll go ahead and click on this uh, link. And what's important here is like, this is the consent process where Logic Apps isn't gonna go ahead and go rogue and go do something that it isn't allowed to do. This is where the user is gonna have that opportunity to provide that feedback and actually allow consent. If the user didn't want to go ahead and perform that action, naturally they could go ahead and back out of this. But in this case, the demo works better if we go ahead and provide that consent. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Yeah, and since we are using Teams, um, it showed it authorized with Teams. I have completed my sign sign in. So now that I've completed my sign in, uh, let's quickly look at the email that uh, the calendar for the applicant and uh, we should be able to see a new meeting invite here show up on the calendar for May 22nd. So this is the uh, interview that we just scheduled with Sarah and uh, let's go back and let this uh, complete and then we can show you the notification in the Teams as well. So while this is completing, uh, the other thing that I want to quickly show you all is uh, the ability to go back and trace into every single step, every decision that your agent takes in this process. So here we are in Logic Apps Run History, and uh, this is a workflow that we had built. And here in Agent Chat, you can see all the uh, messages from your agent from all the system prompts and um, all the tools that ha it has used in that process while we were interacting with it. So here is a tool to get the job postings. Here is a tool to get the job candidates and so on. If, you, uh, if I click on any of these tools, I can go to the specific iteration of that loop and also see the inputs and outputs from the invocation of that tool. So extremely powerful uh, and allows you to go back and look at how your agent is handling all the requests. So let's go back here. Um, and what I really like about what we've done here is that we've got run history, which is a very popular feature that gives you that inputs and outputs. And we've really integrated agent chats alongside it as well. So it really gives you that transparency that you would expect and that traceability that you would expect in an agentic application as well. Yeah, so uh, it, it's, yeah. so. Let me just show you what this looks like in the Teams where the agent was able to use my signed in identity and send this message on the Teams with all the information about the interview. So I think uh, uh, in the time we have, like we just wanted to show you what you can accomplish in terms of building these AI agents out of the box, both conversational and autonomous. And uh, with that, we just have a final call to action for everyone here. Yeah, so we've got some resources to share with y'all if this uh, <laughs> shows oh. up here. How did we get it to work before? Did you have to ex present again? Okay, yeah. here we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, so here's some, some references. We've got our product documentation up to date. So everything that you need to know about Agent Loop is available. Uh, we also have six product demos that we've gone ahead and recorded. And you'll go ahead and find it there in the, in the middle link. And hopefully this will inspire you both with some business related scenarios, but we also have some operations agent scenarios. So if you think about Logic Apps Repair and Resubmit and how do we sort of integrate that with ServiceNow, We've gone ahead and taken care of those demos and hopefully that will provide some inspiration. And then we also have the announcement blog post. So once again, some additional details 
around um, Agent Loop and building agents in Logic Apps. Uh, so thanks for joining us here today. We're super excited about agents. We think it's a very unique capability that's uh, available here in Azure. And we really feel between declarative and codefill, which you're going to hear more about in the, the near term, really does create some differentiation for us. So thanks for joining us and uh, enjoy the everyone. rest of the build.